So a few weeks ago, I got a comment on one of my videos asking if I could do a project with a digital logic chip. So I thought, sure, I can do that. But what chip to use? So I dug through my collection of ICs and looked for something that would be musically useful by itself. And I found this chip, the 74HC4040, a 12-stage ripple counter. So in today's video, we're going to build a subharmonic generator. Let's dive right in and look at the schematic. Input signal comes in here, and this transistor does two things. Protects the 4040 from voltages outside its operating range, and inverts the signal, as the 4040 increments on the falling edge. The first three output stages of this chip are used in this project. However, you could use all or any of the other output stages for even lower subharmonics. Outputs of these counter stages are sent through potentiometers that will be mounted to the faceplate and then mixed together here. The input signal also goes through an op-amp and a potentiometer and is also mixed in with the subharmonics. This capacitor removes DC bias from the signal and this op-amp boosts the signal back up to Eurorack levels where it is output here. Power comes into the board through this connector and the 7805 chip regulates the plus 12 volts down to the 5 volts required by the 4040 chip. Now let's build it. First step, removing the components from the schematic that are going to be mounted to the faceplate and replacing them with solder pads, which gives us a schematic that looks like this. Next is to lay out the components as a single layer PCB. You may notice there are a few connections I didn't make with traces on the PCB. I'll be making those connections during assembly. It is always a trade-off with a single-sided PCB, whether you go for making all the connections with traces on the board thereby increasing the size and complexity of the board, or to make the board small and do a few wired connections later. In this instance, I chose the latter. Now to turn off everything I don't want engraved and send it to my laser cutter software. Always remember to mirror the image and invert the cut so that the laser removes the paint everywhere except where the traces should be. And now to make the faceplate. I always find that drawing guidelines helps to make sure everything will be in the right spot when it's all done. I just make sure that these lines are on their own layer and turn that layer off prior to cutting. And there we have it, a finished faceplate. Now to etch the PCB with ferric chloride. I don't know why my ferric chloride got cloudy, but it still works fine. And with the and with the board etched, it's time to trim it to size. Now to mount all the components of the faceplate. I had to bend the center leg on all the potentiometers to make it fit, but it worked out well in the end. Now to mount all the components to the PCB, making the few connections I didn't do with traces as I go.
there we have it. The remaining holes are to connect to components on the faceplate, which is exactly what I did next. And there we have it, a completed module. Now for a quick smoke test before adding the chips. And with the chips in place, time to add it to the rack. So let's see it in action. Now let's see what it can do as part of a more complete synth voice. subharmonic module. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.